Hola, clase. Como estas hoy? Muy bien. All right. So the learning target for today is to solve absolute value equations. So we're going to be solving equations like we normally do, but we're going to have absolute values in them, which change it just a bit. Let's get started. All right. So now we have an equation. So it says solve the equation, then graph the solution. So almost always those will be the directions that you're given. So let's solve this equation. This is the most basic one you're going to see. So whenever you have an absolute value, the way to undo the absolute value is to write out x and you're going to have to do it twice. The reason for this is that if we have the absolute value of x equals negative 5, then there are two things that we could plug in for x to make that true. Because if you think of it this way, the absolute value of 5 is 5, and the absolute value of negative 5 is also 5. So when you have an absolute value, you will almost always have two answers. So you have to have the positive version that's already there, 5, but it also could be the negative version, negative 5. So x could be either 5 or negative 5. So these are your answers, x equals 5 or x equals negative 5. Then we want to graph it. So x equals 5 or negative 5. So on our number line, let's put a point at 5 and at negative 5. And that's how we graph it. We just put one dot at each point on the number line. So just remember, whenever you have an absolute value, you'll have two answers, one where it equals the positive number, one where it equals the negative number. All right, here's another equation. So again, they want you to solve the equation, then graph the solution. So first, we have the absolute value of 2x minus 6, and that equals 14. So we have just the absolute value here. So to get rid of the absolute value, we need to rewrite the equation, but remember, do it twice. So we have 2x minus 6 and 2x minus 6. And remember, one of them will equal the positive number, so 14, and one will equal the negative number, negative 14. Then we have two equations to solve for. So on the left equation, add 6 to both sides, and we'll get 2x equals 20, and then divide both sides by 2, and we'll have x equals 10. Then on the other equation, do the same thing. Add 6 to both sides, and we'll have 2x equals negative 14 plus 6 is negative 8. Divide both sides by 2, and we'll have x equals negative 4. So our answers are x equals 10 or negative 4. So then we graph it. One problem is our number line only goes up to 7, and we want to graph 10. So that's fine. We can just add more numbers. So extend our line, and we'll have 8, 9, 10. And I'll draw those in. 8, 9, 10. And then plot our two points, 10 and negative 4. And there we go. 
The equation is solved, and like I said, we got two answers, 10 and negative 4. All right, here's another kind of example. So here we have the absolute value of 5x minus 3 equals negative 2. And normally you would think, okay, you write the equation and have two answers, both the positive and the negative. However, this one is kind of tricky. This says an absolute value equals negative 2. Well, if you remember, absolute values always equal a positive number. So how did we take the absolute value of something and get a negative number? The answer is we didn't. It's not physically possible. So the easy answer for this is whenever you have an absolute value and it equals a negative number, the answer is no solution because there are no possible numbers you could put in for x that would make it so the absolute value equals a negative number. So the answer is no solution. Then how do you graph it? Well, that's easy too. You don't do anything. It's no solution, so nowhere on the number line will there be a point. All right, so next, and our final example, will be to write an equation involving absolute value for the graph. So this time, instead of giving you an equation to solve and then graph, I'm giving you a graph and I want you to write the equation. So the first thing you need to do is look at the two points. We have negative 1 and we have 5. Then you want to find the point that is exactly halfway between them. So between negative 1 and 5, there are sits units in between them, sits numbers in between. So it is sits units long. So if it's sits units long, we want to find the spot that's exactly halfway through. So half of sits is 3. So 3 units between the two. So 3 units from negative 1 would be 2. And just to make sure, 3 units from 5 would also be 2. So we need to mark right there. So 2. And the distance between each of the points and 2 is 3 units. So the point in between is 2, and there three units away from two. So this is how you would write the equation. So we need an absolute value and we have our number x and they are each three units away. And the number they end up being is two. So the number we have is two that they're both in between so if we subtract 2, that should give us the distance it was between, which is 3. So all you have to do is look and have the absolute value of x and then subtract the number that is in the middle of the two numbers and then have that equal the distance between each of the numbers and the middle number. And we can also check to make sure this works by plugging it in. So we have two numbers, negative 1 and 5. So let's plug these in. So we have absolute value of negative 1 minus 2 should equal 3 and the absolute value of 5 minus 2 should also equal 3. Let's see if it works. Negative 1 minus 2 is negative 3 so we have the absolute value of negative 3. Does that equal 3? Yes, it does.
And over here, absolute value of 5 minus 2, 5 minus 2 is 3. And the absolute value of 3 does equal 3. So both of these are correct. So we did it correctly. And just to make sure, this is what we want for an answer, though, because we want the equation. All right, please take notes on this. If you have any questions whatsoever, please feel free to ask. You can also email me. But take notes on this, and I will see you next class. Have a good night.